how is it even possible that a function higher up in a fast-growing hierarchy can grow more slowly than a function lower down in a fast-growing hierarchy? Well, this kind of thing can happen if you choose your fundamental sequences in the right way, and uh, we're going to go over an example of that. So what fundamental sequences are we going to go with? Well, given a limit ordinal of the form omega times n, where n is going to be a positive integer, uh, we're going to associate the following kind of fundamental sequence. So uh, we just count up one by one at first. So 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n, where n is our positive integer. That's how far we count up to. And then after that, for our purposes, it's not going to matter what we pick. We just have to uh, hurry up and converge to omega times n so that this is a proper fundamental sequence. Now let's get to calculating. So we're going to calculate f omega squared of 2. Now what fundamental sequence am I going to associate to omega squared? I'm going to go with this one here, the same one that we've kind of been using, 0, omega, omega times 2, dot, 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 which is going to go ahead and uh, be our fundamental sequence for omega squared. And then for omega times 2, uh, 2 here is our positive integer n, so we said the way it's going to work is we just count up to that positive integer, so 0, 1, 2. And then we just have to hurry up and converge to omega times 2. So one way to do that would be omega plus 3, omega plus 4, omega plus 5, dot, dot, dot. So this will be the fundamental sequence that we go with. Now f omega squared of 2, omega squared is a limit ordinal, so we plug in the 2 into the omega squared, plug in. Um, so omega squared of 0, omega squared of 1, omega squared of 2. Okay, so omega squared gets replaced with omega times 2. Now omega times 2 is also a limit ordinal, so I'm going to plug in the 2 into there. So omega 2 of 0, omega 2 of 1, omega 2 of 2 is 2. So omega times 2 is going to get replaced with the 2. And now I have f2 of 2, so f omega squared of 2 is just equal to f2 of 2. Interesting. Let's try some other inputs. How about f omega squared of 3? Well, we plug in the 3 into the omega squared, giving us omega times 3. Now we plug in 3 to that, so let's see. Omega 3 of 0, omega 3 of 1, omega 3 of 2, omega 3 of 3. Okay, that's 3. So omega times 3 gets replaced with the 3, and we see that f omega squared of 3 is equal to f3 of 3. Well, let's think more generally. So f omega squared of n, we'll let n be greater than or equal to 2, right? We're only really interested in how f omega squared grows in the long run, so nothing, nothing, uh, nothing important is being lost by just focusing on n greater than or equal to 2. So we plug in the n to omega squared to get omega times n. Then we plug in the n into the omega times n to get, let's see, omega n of 0, omega n of 1, omega n of 2, omega n of 3. Omega n of n is n. So the omega times n gets replaced with n, and we see that f omega squared of n is equal to f sub n of n. Which, uh, hey, the f omega squared, it's really not growing as fast as you might expect it to because of these weird fundamental sequences that we've uh, chosen. All right, now we just want to choose a fundamental sequence for omega that makes f omega grow faster than f omega squared. So there's many you could choose, but I decided to choose this one. And uh, so you see the zeroth index has a one, the 1th index has a 2, and so on, so it's always 1 greater than the index. So f omega of n is going to be equal to f sub n plus 1 of n, right? I plug in that n into omega, it takes me to n plus 1. And now we see, of course, f n plus 1 of n is uh, bigger than f n of n, and this is all for n being greater than or equal to 2. 
Uh, but that's okay, because we're just talking about uh, f omega growing faster than f omega squared, which just means it has to eventually forever be larger than f omega squared. Right? That's what it means. Um, so, by choosing the fundamental sequences the way we have, we have now created a situation where something higher up in the hierarchy grows more slowly than something lower down in the hierarchy. So what have I done to make this happen? Well, it's just a little bit of diagonalization. So here I have um, my limit ordinals up to omega squared, and then over here I have the fundamental sequences associated with them. So for example, omega times two goes zero, one, two, and then whatever comes after, maybe it's omega plus three, omega plus four, doesn't really matter for our uh, purposes. So I just put these red dashes and in here. Now, what I have essentially done is chosen the fundamental sequences so that this diagonal grows slower than this row, because this diagonal is kind of what you get with omega squared, because if you plug in, uh, say, 3 into omega squared, you get omega times 3, and then you plug in 3 to that, which takes you over to this 3. So it's kind of like you plug in 3, you go 3 down, then you plug in 3 again, you go 3 over. Um, it always takes you to this diagonal, and as you see, the diagonal grows more slowly than the row. So uh, it's really just a recognition of like a little bit of a diagonalization, um, uh, you know, coolness or whatever you would call it. Um, so thank you for uh, watching and taking interest. Let me know if you have any questions or comments or anything. And uh, yeah, take care.